This is one of those classic conservation of momentum problems that involves billiard balls. Which, of course, are the good old balls on a pool table. So the way this one is set up here is that you have two billiard balls which are approaching each other. One has a mass M1, it's moving with some speed V1 initial. Another one has a mass M2, and it's moving at a speed V2 initial, and their head is straight towards each other. Now, it turns out in the problem is they don't collide head-on like that and maybe bounce out. They sort of just miss each other. It's called a glancing collision, where they sort of just basically touch on the edges like that, and they get sent off in some sort of weird, sent off in some sort of weird direction. So what they're telling the problem is that one of the masses gets sent straight up like this. So, say, mass M2 goes up with a V2 final straight up north like that, okay, just straight up. So the collision happens, and this ball just gets straight up, sent straight up that way. If this happens, then they want you to tell them at what direction, say, theta, and what speed does the other ball leave the collision. So what they're asking for in this problem here is what is V1 final and theta? They want to know what those two parameters would be there. Okay? So, yeah, straight up, it's a conservation momentum problem. So I'll say P initial X is equal to P final X, and P initial Y is equal to P final Y. So you get your conservation momentum going. It is in two dimensions, so let's just take a look at what we get. Okay? This is the initial scenario over here. This is the final scenario over here. So what will happen then is let's just fill in these equations, both for the x and y momentum, see what we get. So along the x direction then, what initial momentum do we have? Well, we have an m1 and a v1 initial. So in other words, along the x-axis, we know this ball is moving along the in the positive x direction before the collision happens. And of course, also before the collision happens, we have an m2 v2 initial because this ball is moving along the negative x-axis before the collision happens. So there's my momentum before the collision. So that's my px initial. Now the p, the p final x, or the px final over here, so what is moving along the x-axis after the collision? Well, I look in the final case over here. This one's moving all along the y-axis, so it has no x component of momentum. This one has a component of momentum along the x-axis, which looks like it's going to be something like minus m1 times v1 final times the cosine theta. So in other words, that's some vector components here. We've seen at least in one other problem here, and it comes up very common in these two-dimensional momentum problems here, is that this speed over here is fine to be going down angle theta like that, but it has, definitely has a component this way. In other words, it has a V1 final X like that, and a V1 final Y like that. There's two components of that V1 final going down. And so you can find V1 final X with a cosine, V1 final Y with a sine, and that's why I have this cosine right here, because V1 final times the cosine theta is the X component of the momentum as it goes out of the collision, and I have the minus sign indicating that's moving along the negative X axis. So you have this really nice equation you formed here, which is conservation momentum along the X axis. Now you'll do just the same thing here, only for the Y axis, which will look like this. What do I have moving in the collision? So this is the X momentum here. What do I have now for the Y momentum? Well... I look at the collision and go, what's moving along the y-axis before the collision over here? I don't see anything. I don't see anything moving along the y-axis before the collision, so the total y-momentum before the collision is zero. Big fat zero right there. That's p initial y, zero. How about after the collision? Well, I've got a couple things moving along the y-axis after the collision. I've got this one moving straight up along the y-axis, so I'll definitely have a m2 v2 final along the y-axis after the collision. And I have the y component of this one's momentum after the collision, so I'll definitely have a minus m1 v1 final times the sine of theta after the collision. And I don't see any other y momentum after the collision, so you can draw a nice box on this and go, okay, I've got my two conservation momentum equations all set up. So I'll sort of stop the solution here because I need the rest can be solved. You have to go digging in the problem now and find out what your numbers are. But I'm pretty sure, if I remember the problem correctly, that all the masses are given. So all of these quantities here, like the M1 and the M2, those are all known. M2 and M1, those are all known by the problem. And I'm pretty sure also that this V2 final is known as well. Like they told you how fast the ball is moving straight north after the collision. V2 final. So this quantity right here is known. And also you're told how fast the balls are moving in towards each other. In other words, the initial ones right there. So you're told the V1 initial, you know this, and V2 initial, and you know all of those things. So what you look at then is you have two equations and two unknowns. The things that you don't know in these two equations here are your V1 final and your theta. But it's two equations and two unknowns, so they should be able to put those things together and solve. Um, I might divide the two, or alternatively you can solve 
this for V1 final and plug in for that V final and get the angle, that kind of thing. But it's two equations, two unknowns, so we'll leave it for you to solve and get your answer to come out.